Nazarene and uh, this video is to go through our syllabus for bio 2020 microbiology of infectious diseases I teach section 1 dr. Wilburn teaches section 2 you get three units for lecture and an additional unit for or for lab uh, at the beginning you can see that um, just basic contact info when we meet what classroom we're in when the different lab sections meet and then you get into your book options I've been emailing you about this so hopefully everybody's on top of this but you can pick up either a hard copy or an e-text version uh, at a discount the e-text version is discounted and the cool thing about the e-text version is it comes with a bunch of study tools that you can use if you find them helpful uh, we're in addition to this we're gonna read a, a book called follow your gut on the human microbiome by dr. Rob Knight very short book but real interesting introduce you to microbiome and its um, its interactions if you will with with human health for better or for worse you also need an eye clicker too you can share it with somebody except that you can't share it at the same time so they can't be in this class uh, and you can use it for multiple classes etc but make sure you have that right away so pick one up rent it buy it whatever you got to do office hours I'm in Roar Science the newly remodeled uh, first floor room 176 I will try to always be available Mondays and Wednesdays from 2 to 4 the very best bet you can do is make an appointment with me and we can kind of work something out it gets on the calendar and then nothing interrupts me and I don't step out and miss you course catalog description we're going to focus on microbial physiology the diseases associated with infections by certain pathogenic microbes and the vertebrate ie human response to microbial infections and it's primarily focused on the bacteria though we will introduce eukaryotic pathogens and viruses you had to have had some chemistry either chem 103 or chem 152 and you have to have at least one semester of anatomy and physiology you can be in your second semester of phys uh, but you can't be uh, behind in your your a and for this class learning outcomes really want to understand detrimental interactions between microbes and their human hosts uh, how do bacteria viruses get in cause disease get out and then what sort of clinical interventions do we have uh, potentially to control them some specific learning outcomes physical nature and life cycles of bac bacteria and viruses distinguishing between bacteria and viruses and the diseases they cause very very important because they behave differently in a patient and we treat them differently and so we really need to understand biologically which ones are which and how they behave then we want to distinguish the enteric bacteria the gram positive rods and the gram positive coxy three of the biggest groups of bacteria pathogens we're going to look pretty deeply at antibiotics and antibiotic resistance and think clinically how we can use those to fight infections and then you're gonna learn some basic microbiology lab procedures as well all right the numbers everybody's always interested in the numbers you've got four exams that include your final they're all worth 125 points so the finals not worth any more than any of the others exam one of course is all new material exams two and three we'll have about 20 percent of the points coming from the older material and then exam four is completely cumulative 100 percent covers the whole semester so make sure whatever your your study strategy is it's not like memorize and forget and move on but you've got to learn and understand the material so that you can retain it because you will see it again and again and if you end up working clinically you're going to come across these things your entire career let's see what else homework we talked um, now we didn't talk about homework talked about it in the canvas video make sure you you check out that canvas video if you haven't yet by the way you're gonna have homework roughly every week there's actually only eight of them so it's not exactly every week but ballpark every week worth 10 points each the due dates are uh, on the schedule below but they're also in canvas and you'll see that you can work on these together because really more than anything what I want is for you to learn this material but you have to have to have to turn in your own work written in your own words you don't take the words off the internet you don't take the words off somebody else's uh, assignment and I don't mean just copying and pasting make sure that the words you're giving back you totally understand and it's the way that you understand that particular topic that's what the way you need to go when you turn in these homeworks anything that gets turned in that's the same you're gonna get a zero so don't do that um, these are gonna be uh, typed up to the extent that they can be typed 
there in Word documents. And anything that needs to be sketched, you got to find a creative way to do that. You can sketch it, take a photo with your phone, and insert the photo into the Word document, whatever works for you. And then all that needs to be re uploaded into Canvas uh, by way of Turnitin. Turnitin is a software, if you haven't used it before, that just checks to make sure that your words don't match other people's words um, within our class and then it also scans the internet to see if you've just sort of copied and pasted sentences or paragraphs or anything like that so just do your own work you won't have to worry about how turn it in turns out and that'll give me some confidence in what you're turning in now you have to know some chemistry for this class and we don't have time to reteach it to you and so there's a review quiz uh, at the end of the first week so we start classes on a Wednesday the following Wednesday you're gonna have a chemistry review quiz on uh, Canvas, there's a module set up that will guide you through all the highlights of the review, so work your way through that. Um, there's going to be a chemistry homework assignment. You can work your way through that as well, and then we'll take the quiz together in class. So if you need to start brushing up now, that's not a bad idea, especially if uh, chemistry's been a while for you. We're going to do three case studies worth 10 points each. I'll, I'll talk a lot more about them as we get closer. They're a lot of fun. We'll talk about a urinary tract infection a respiratory tract infection and a gastrointestinal tract infection and you guys will be troubleshooting and trying to diagnose those infections uh, in teams and then finally lab activities which we'll talk about uh, more during uh, our first lab there is no lab during the first week but uh, next week we'll start in on lab and you need to be ready for it here's the points and how they all break down here's how a certain percentage leads to a certain letter grade this notes real important I round off to the nearest whole number. So if you've got a 71.5, I round up to a 72, that gives you a C. If you got a 71.1, that's rounded down to a 71, you've got a C minus. These are non-negotiable. Don't argue with me about them. Don't come back to me and say, well, I have to have this grade for you know the major that I'm in or for my uh, scholarship money or anything like that. What you have to have as far as grades go is entirely up to you. You've got to work that out. Best thing to do is just get an A and then you don't have to worry about it, right? If, if that's an option, get an A. Quit worrying about these uh, borderline grades. But don't ask me to bump a grade based on what you need or don't ask me to give you extra credit based on a grade you need. You just simply have to earn your grade and you'll get what you earn, okay? All right. Uh, here's our lecture schedule. You can work your way through it. I say approximate because I get off track sometimes. But you'll see what we're going to cover, the kinds of things we're going to cover. Um, here are all the dates. Cell structure and function, for example. We're going to spend three full days looking at how primarily bacteria are built. Um, that's from chapters 3 and chapter 11. And again, it's not all of chapter 3. It's not all of chapter 11. So make sure you're following the reading guides that you can find on Canvas. So which sections of chapter 3 do I need to know? Which sections of chapter 11 do I need to know? You can see homework 1 has to be uploaded before class begins on Monday the 9th. Chemistry quiz we're going to take together in class on Wednesday the 11th and on down the line. So your homework assignments are in the far right here. The chapters that the content is coming from are here in the middle, and here are all your topics. You can see when we're going to cover a, a case study, what will hopefully be review time. If I'm behind, it may be catch-up time, and your exam dates. So October 4th, uh, November 4th, and then December 11th for your three um, normal midterm exams. And then, unfortunately, your final is Friday of finals week. I can't accommodate you if you buy a ticket to go home early or do something silly like that. The only way I'm allowed by the university to let you take this final exam earlier is if you have three or more exams on our exam day. So if you've got three or more on Friday the 20th, tell me, and we'll bump you up a little bit. Or if your previous last exam was on Wednesday, instead of making you wait all the way through Friday, I'm allowed to let you take it a day early but otherwise don't tell me hey we're going on vacation and leaving early can I take your exam early I simply can't do that because I can't let the exam get out uh, early and I'm not allowed to do it by university rules so there you go um, and then you can read on microbiology lab uh, section all the details about which section you're in and who the people are that are grading and prepping media and what our goals are we'll talk more about this together during the first week in lab the real key for you is to look at how you're going to earn points there's going to be weekly quizzes on the reading there are going to be a total of four lab reports that you're going to turn in 
not something every day, but uh, every few weeks. <clears throat> There's a book called Follow Your Gut that you need to pick up, and you'll have a 20-point quiz on Follow Your Gut. Um, and then you can see where the, the points, the 150 points, break down here in lab. We won't have lab this first week, but we'll start next week. Uh, here's your lab calendar. You can see nothing the first week. And then starting the second week, we're going to jump right in, including a quiz on the first week of reading. So you need to go to Canvas, download the first lab unit on microbial growth, read the introduction and all of week one so that you know what's going on. And if there are videos that need to be watched, watch them. Uh, just make sure that you learn the content well because you're going to have a quiz and you'll have a quiz every single week. So make sure you come prepared uh, to do the work in lab by having done the studying starting right away. Now I'm not going to go through right now the lab safety guidelines. Go through these on your own. This is what's called biosafety level one procedures. There are going to be some key things. We'll talk about most of them in lab, but a couple things you need to know before you come to lab. Number one, you've got to have... Um, uh, full shoes that cover your feet, right? The top of your foot can't be exposed. So no sandals, flip-flops, flats, anything like that. Number two, hair needs to be tied up. So if you got long hair, bring a scrunchie or a, a hair tie of some kind and tie it up so it doesn't swing down in front of you, get into bacterial cultures or into a Bunsen burner. And then the other real biggie is that you don't want to bring uh, anything into the lab that doesn't need to be in the lab. So no food or drink of any kind, not even temporarily. Those stay outside the lab in the cubbies. Your backpack stay outside the lab, which means if you're worried about what's in your backpack, just don't bring it with you. Keep it locked up in your room someplace. Um, all you need to do is come is bring yourself in with something to write with and any papers that you've printed off like your lab handouts from Canvas. Okay, so take your time. Go through the safety guidelines. We'll go through them again together. Um, you know, our mission, academic accommodations, please don't hesitate if you need accommodations. We're going to talk a lot about honesty this semester. FERPA policy just says that I'm going to protect your, um, your private information. Here's that final exam policy where I am not allowed to mess with that exam date, so don't ask me to. Copyrights, don't, don't uh, steal anybody's copyrighted material. You got to show up for class uh, so that I don't have to dock you points or drop you. So here's uh, all this attendance. Uh, details, excused versus unexcused absences, be real respectful of one another, keep your phones put away, um, texting during class is is really not good for anybody, it doesn't help you at all, uh, microbiology is a pretty tough discipline and so to be successful you really have to be present for an hour three times a week with me and then in lab no cell phones or laptops inside the lab as well. All right, great. That's it for the syllabus. Uh, we're going to jump into class right away tomorrow on Wednesday the 4th. So shoot me a note. Let me know if you have any questions or bring your questions to class tomorrow. Otherwise, I'm going to assume you've read the syllabus, you're in agreement with it, and you understand all the different policies involved. So uh, that's it for that, and I will see you guys tomorrow.